Hello everyone, it's Lisa here and I'm back with my first video tutorial in about four months. As you can imagine, and I'm sure that all of you are living through it yourselves, the virtual in-person hybrid teaching life has become quite the struggle while managing our home lives. I have a very active seven-year-old and a one-year-old that have been keeping me very busy, uh, particularly the one-year-old. Uh, be sure to check out the hilarious video that I posted of him titled Hilarious One-Year-Old to better understand how I let four months pass without posting any new material here. However, I'm back and I'm excited to share with all of you a strategy that I came up with that has really worked for me and my students when needing to annotate a document, particularly a PDF. Now, if you are not sure how to get those PDFs and make them interactive and get them onto your slides like I have here in the video, make sure to check out my video entitled Using Nimbus um, to make PDFs interactive. So here we go without further ado. One of the best ways that I have found to annotate a document with students is by creating what I call a highlight box. Now you can annotate, you can use um, and highlight within a text um, if it is a typed text. However, if you have a PDF version, um, I don't know about you, but I definitely do not have time to retype out an entire story for my students um, so that they are able to highlight. So this is a way that I've found around that that is super easy and child-friendly. Now I teach high school ENL, so I teach English to students that speak other languages. However, I do have a seven-year-old and I've had her use this with activities that I have made for my students to test it out and she's able to do it with no problem. So that's second grade. Um, just in case if you're uh, an elementary school teacher and you're wondering how this is going to work for you. So uh, this is a story that I had been reading with my students. It's about uh, Hurricane Katrina. Okay, here is one piece or page from the text. Okay, I used Nimbus to basically uh, snip the piece of the story that I wanted. I added it here on my slides uh, along with the audio of me reading it for my students because pronunciation is very important when learning a second language. Um, and if you're not sure how to do this, I do have a video as well on using Vocaroo to add audio to your slides. So make sure you check that out. But here I have a question that I post to my students where it says that Courtney, which is the, the character in the story, um, he had many obstacles in his life. So what obstacles did he face? So I, I tell them not only to list them in the text box below, but also to use the highlighted box to highlight them. So if we look here, it says quickly that um, his father had moved across the country and his mother was in jail. Um, right there, there's two. So the students are able to then drag the text box, I'm sorry, the highlighted box, over the text and you see here you can still read the words through it okay and students are able to make it bigger or they can just drag another box down now you see when I moved my highlighted box here down to the text it looked like there was an infinite number of boxes so I can continue to drag boxes down and highlight whatever text that I want and there are more boxes this is what I'm going to be demonstrating to, for all of you how to do, okay? So I have here the same little snippet of the story that I had used on the previous slide. And in order to make those highlighted text boxes, all I did was I simply went up to the shape icon here and I chose the rectangle. Okay, and depending on what you're having your students do, whether it's identifying a particular word or words, um, if you say to them, oh, highlight all of the past tense verbs in the paragraph, um, obviously you're not gonna make them so long, uh, but you know, students are pretty easily able to manipulate this box and make them smaller or larger if they have to. Um, and like I said, depending on the activity is going to depend on how long um, or large, you know, if the text is really small or big, um, how big or small you're going to make them. So I chose yellow, okay? Um, you can choose any color you want. Uh, and right now, this is not, as you can see, this is not transparent at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back to my paint can here. I'm going to click where it says custom. And then down at the bottom, it says transparency. So you're just going to drag this, and I usually take it about midway, 
Okay, I'm gonna click OK, and then you see here that I can then put that over top of the words, and you can read the words through it, and it just highlights the text for you. Now, to do what I had on the last slide where it looks like you have like an infinite number of boxes, um, Anybody who used to use the smart boards, you had the infinite tool. Okay, so we don't have that in Google Slides, but a way around it is to simply, um, if you're on a Windows computer, you can hit Control C like cat and Control V for victory. Um, or if you are on a Mac, it's gonna be Command C and Command V. So if I Command C and then just continually hit Control V, Okay, so I'm just holding my finger on the control button and then I continually hit V. It's going to make a whole bunch of them, okay? But now, who wants or has time to sit here and line all of these up? Not me. So, and I'm sure you don't either. So I'm just going to highlight all of them, okay, by dragging and making that box around them and it highlights all of the shapes that I just made. And then when I right click, you're going to see an option here that says align horizontally. I'm going to do that to the center. And then I'm going to right click again and I'm going to go to where it says align vertically this time and then I'm going to go to middle. And there you have it. Here they all are. So now when I go to drag one of my boxes, there are still a bunch there. So depending again how many boxes you think you're going to need is going to depend on how many you make. Um, but let's say that after I did all of this that I now realized that I want these boxes higher up on my slide. Simply just highlight where the boxes are and then you can use your arrows to move them anywhere on the slide that you would like. Okay, again, you can make these um, different colors. So if you wanted to have students who are reading poet, doing some kind of poetry lesson and you wanted them to differentiate between uh, examples of simile and metaphor within a poem, you could have them highlight the examples of simile in yellow and metaphor in green, for example. Um, and so that's another way to use this to have students really, I, you know, it's interactive, it's fun, it's not just read the text and answer the question, um, which, you know, I know is sometimes like a go to for a lot of people, but especially when we get to the secondary levels, I think it's a little harder for us to keep students engaged. Um, because we don't have a lot of like the cutesy things that we can do at the elementary level. But I have to tell you, my students absolutely love this. Uh, a couple of other examples and additional ideas of things that I do with my students, I have here on the slide and it's using transparent circles, okay? Just to identify like, oh here, circle all of the, circle the correct answer or circle the, um, like again, I said before, the past tense verbs in, in the sentence. I also used text boxes to make my PDFs interactive. So if you had an old worksheet that you still wanted to use with your students, have no fear, you're able to do that. And again, I'll refer back to the other video that I had um, made months ago uh, with using Nimbus, which is an extension to and text boxes to make your PDFs interactive. You can create lines, red lines, Okay, um, and you can do that by coming up to, again, right to the right of your shape icon where it says lines and make them as long or as short as you want. If you want students to um, omit certain sentences, if you're doing corrections. And also um, something else that is really, really great and it's better than using just a text box. If you want students to comment on writing, okay? So if you wanted to teach them to ask questions while they're writing. Um, you can use the call outs. Now I'm going to show an example of that on the next slide. Okay, so here I have one of the call outs and if you're curious as to where I found that, I found them in shapes again. You go down to where it says call outs and then there are a bunch of options down here at the bottom. I just chose the first one. Okay, and if I wanted students to ask questions while they were reading, the great thing about these call outs is that you know, with a regular text box, you don't want them to really like put it over top of the text because then it's covering the text. It becomes a little confusing. However, with these, okay, I can ask a question. Um, and I'm just going to put a question mark for now. Okay. But if this question was about this sentence down here, 
okay? It's not covering the whole text, but you can drag the little tail at the bottom for them to be able to pinpoint exactly what their question is referring to in the text. So these are just some ideas, like I said, that I have used with my students. Um, it'd be great for either secondary or elementary level to make things interactive, to keep things fun, to change things up a little bit in class. I know we're all struggling. Sometimes we kind of get like a brain block, but I have used this, like I said, from personal experience. It's great. So if you like this video, if it helped you, make sure that you like the video, make sure you hit the notification bell so that you don't miss my future videos. And always don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my future videos. Take care, everyone.